The land explored by our ancestors extends from the Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition, Shells of Nomads, continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists led by Pilgrim of the 21st century, Sabari Skakov, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Kipchak sultans ruled in many Muslim countries in the Middle East. Sultans came from the Mamluks, that is warriors, who were captured during the battles and then sold into slavery. The medieval historian Abu al-Ala ibn Hasul wrote in his work named Features of Turkic Warriors. They were always on an equal footing with their master, the food they ate, the clothes they dressed, and the horses they rode. They never worked on the farm and never did dirty work. They demonstrated best qualities of warriors and held high positions in the army. The warlike Kipchaks were appreciated in Egypt not only for numerous victories over enemies but also for their creative activity. They have left a great cultural heritage. Magnificent architectural monuments built by them are silent witnesses to the power of the Mamluks. <laughs> Now we are in the old city. There are a lot of mosques, madrasa, mausoleums. We visited almost each one of them. We learned about five or six another medieval buildings that are not known in our country. They were built by the Kipchak sultans, emirs and beks. Tourists do not visit them because they do not know about their existence. Of course, now we will try to correct the situation. We will talk about these unique monuments left by our ancestors. Cairo is a city of contrasts, modernity and antiquity, poverty and luxury, and even dead and alive people are always nearby. Poverty forced residents of the city's old districts to live right among the tombs and crypts. Kipchak mausoleums now serve as permanent or temporary housing for them. The participants of the Trails of Nomads expedition decided to find out if this is true. They went to the area of Cairo, which is popularly called the City of the Dead. A large number of people live here among the graves. Of course, this is no accident. The main reason is the high cost of land and housing. Therefore, many people settled in the cemetery. Mausoleums erected by our ancestors also provide shelters for those in need. Three mausoleums are behind me. They were built by the Kipchak Mamluks. This area is popularly called the City of the Dead. In fact, this is a cemetery where the Mamluks were buried. Therefore, of course, it would be right to call this place a Mamluk cemetery. According to Egyptian historians, there are more than 50 large tombs and mausoleums. In fact, there were many more. Indeed, many such burials were destroyed and no information was left about them. Those that have survived to this day serve people as the housing. According to some reports, about 5,000 people reside there. Local residents turned all the mausoleums into permanent residence. Now we see the tombs, and people live around here. You see, all this is a burial place. Despite this, people live here. For example, in one of the crypts, food is stored. In the other, people sleep. A plate is laid on top of the tomb. Below, a person is buried, and people live above him. And so it is everywhere. Here are the neighboring mausoleums, and there is the same picture. Here, perhaps, there are graves of our ancestors. This is a fairly large area. It is very difficult to find the right building in Cairo with its mysterious streets. Despite certain difficulties, members of the scientific expedition managed to find many previously unknown historical monuments left by our ancestors. For example, this is the mausoleum and madrasa of Karasun Karbe. These structures are located next to the complex of Sultan Baybars al-Jahangir. 
Karasunkar lived in the 13th to 14th centuries. He ruled Damascus. We arrived at the mausoleum and madrasa of Karasunkar Bey. He was an outstanding statesman. This is a very authoritative ruler who has reached great achievements in politics. Now there is a school on the place of his madrasa, and he is buried in the mausoleum. Beks and emirs greatly influenced the decision of the rulers. Before an important undertaking, the sultans always consulted with them and received their consent. At any time, emirs and Beks could, if necessary, remove the ruler from the throne, especially amid the threat from the enemies. They also made a significant contribution to the development of the economy, science, education, and culture. Proof of this is another beautiful building built by Emir Sargatmish. This is a mosque madrasa. The historical monument was found by the participants of the expedition. It turned out that the son of Sargatmish, Ibrahim, died during its construction. Here is his grave. Sargatmish is buried in the same mosque. It is known that he died in Alexandria. In the time of troubles, many Mamluks became famous not only because of their military abilities. For example, Sargatmish was also a good expert in the financial sector. Knowledge and skills allowed him to reach career heights and wealth. He spent his fortune solely on good deeds. He built a magnificent architectural structure, a mosque madrasa. In this largest educational institution, students were trained in four madhabs. The main mentor was Emir Khatib Kawam al-Din al Itkani al Farabi al Turkistani. By the way, he is the author of the explanation for the famous Islamic work Al Hidya. One of Kazakhstan's spiritual centers for training the experts on the Quran is named after him. He built a unique mosque. There was a madrasa on the second floor and a dormitory on the third. There were separate rooms for four madhabs. In the center was a place for ablution. The building was built of pure marble. The stone stays cold very well. During hot days, it is always cool inside. Another eminent person of those times is Emir Taibaris. He was a representative of the ruler of Egypt and Syria. He fought against the Mongol invaders along with Az Zahir Baibars and Kalawun al-Mansur. He also built a mosque and an Islamic educational institution. His madrasa was special. It was something like modern universities. For example, in the middle of the building, there were special rooms where students could relax. All these mosques and madrasa operate to this day. They are historical monuments visited by millions of tourists. That is, they continue to benefit the state and local residents. Kipchak Mamluks not only ruled the country, they enriched Arab civilization with elements of the steppe culture. This is evidenced by numerous written sources that are stored in the Museum of Islamic Art in Cairo. The scientific expedition team took a look at the works of medieval historians. According to scientists, many of them may be the subject of more in-depth research. Tenge minted in mints of the Kipchak sultans, Mamluk military armor, weapons, household items, dishes and horse harness, patrimonial signs of the Kipchak sultans. The images of animals and birds used in them are all part of the great steppe culture. <laughs> There is a very interesting fact. There are emblems on the dishes. The first is Sultan Baibars, the second is Sultan Kalawun, the third is the son of Kalawun, Mohammed. So every Sultan has his own coat of arms. A very beautiful coat of arms belonged to Sultan Baibars. It depicts a lion. Kalawun's one has two birds of prey. The current Russian coat of arms is very similar to it. The ancestors of the Kazakhs have always lived in harmony with nature. They took everything necessary for life from the environment. The Kipchaks considered themselves the descendants of Kogbori, which means blue wolf. 
The Kipchak sultans who ruled Egypt also depicted animals and birds on their emblems. For example, Baibars had a lion on the coat of arms, and An Nasser, Muhammad ibn Kalawun, had a steppe eagle. The seals of some Mamluks are very similar to the patrimonial signs of the Kazakh tribes. These are two parallel lines. This is a sign of the Kipchaks. <laughs> In front of the museum, there are two statues of lions made from marble. These are the symbols of our ancestor Baibars. He always put his symbols, lions, in front of the facilities he built. Museum of Islamic Art looks like other Cairo buildings erected by the Kipchak sultans. The development of the Islam religion had a very strong influence on the development of architecture. This fountain in the museum reminds me of the Bakhti Sarai fountain. Above is a small platform. Then it is divided into two small ones. Then again a large platform and so on. There is an alternation. The water cycle system resembles the Bakhtisarai fountain. All this testifies to the close ties between the regions. Mamluk sultans, especially Az Zahir Baibars, constantly maintained contact with their historical homeland. The Egyptian state, led by the Mamluks and the ruler of Deshti Kipchak, were strategic partners. According to some reports, it was Sultan Baibars who influenced the spread of the Islamic religion in the Golden Horde. Proof of this is the letter of Berke Khan to Sultan Baibars, where he announced the adoption of Islam and that this religion received official status in his state. He also spoke about his intention to go to war against Hulagu, who did not recognize Allah, and his messenger, the Prophet Muhammad. Later, the Mamluks and Dashta Kipchak state formed an alliance that did not allow the Mongols to conquer the Middle East. As a sign of respect, Sultan Baibars named his son in honor of Berke Khan. The names of Sultan Baibars and Khan Berke were pronounced during Friday prayers in Mecca, Medina, and all mosques of Egypt. So on the basis of respect and cooperation, the cultures of the two nations were enriched. There was an ancient bazaar near the mosque of the Sultan Baibars. They always sold fresh kumis and horse meat. There are still a lot of words borrowed from the Kipchak language and the so-called street language of the Egyptians, Amnia. When the Kipchak sultans ruled Egypt, the Kipchak language was the state language in the country. Special dictionary has been published for local residents. However, its author is unknown. The dictionary was compiled around the middle of the 13th to 14th centuries. The book presents translations of Kipchak words into Arabic and Persian. Thus, many words were borrowed from Kipchak. For example, the word on like in the Kazakh language means the right side. The word kari means the part of the arm between the shoulder and the elbow. Similar elements exist both in the language and in the cultures of the two peoples. In Egypt, there is a musical instrument similar to the Kazakh dombra. It is called a ruba. People play Q bars on this instrument in the south of our country, as well as in Syria. This is also one of the elements of the Kazakh culture, which was adopted by the Arabs. Today, everyone is free to choose a language, culture or religion. Democracy is in priority. The Mamluks strove for this. No one forced the country inhabitants to speak only the Turkic language. The people themselves sought to learn the language spoken by prominent statesmen. They believe that if they knew their language, then peace and prosperity would remain on their land. Therefore, then, both oral Kipchak speech and Kipchak writing developed in the country. This was evidenced by the translation of the famous Persian work 
Gulistan into the Kipchak language almost immediately after its release. Kipchak Mamluks left a big mark in the history and culture of Egypt. Thanks to the peace and stability in the region that they provided, the living conditions of the people improved. For example, wise decisions of Sultan Baibars allowed people of different religions to live in the neighborhood. During his reign in Jerusalem, religious temples were built for both Muslims and Christians. That is, only this fact indicates that the Kipchak sultans were just rulers. British Orientalist Stanley Lang Poole wrote a book about Egypt in the early 20th century. According to him, the number of Kipchaks in this country reached 1 million in the 14th century. Probably today in Egypt, which has the population of 100 million people, there are many people related to the current Kazakhs. To learn more about this, the participants of the scientific expedition went to the village of Zhuzhebe, located 150 kilometers from Cairo. The descendants of the Kipchaks live there most compactly. This place is called Zhuzhebe, that is Zhuz, in translation means hundred, and Zhebe, arrows. There seemed to be a battle here. Most likely this was a battle with the Crusaders, according to the locals. They also say that they are descendants of the Mamluks. We will find out later if this is true. Are there any blood ties between Kazakhs and residents of Zhuzhebe? The scientific expedition participants took samples of DNA analysis. This method, thanks to the genetic information of the Y chromosomes, which has not changed for centuries, will help determine the relationship. Why this village was called Zhuzebe is still unknown. Scientific research is underway. According to folk tales, there was a battle between the Kipchak Mamluks and the Crusaders. Therefore, this area is called Zhuzebe, and the people who live here call themselves the descendants of the Mamluks. I think your genetic studies should confirm this. During the work in Egypt, scientific expedition team took genetic samples from all residents who expressed a desire. The results of this experiment may become sensational. Such a large-scale project is being implemented for the first time. I am very pleased to meet the Kazakhs, who are descendants of the Kipchaks. For me, donating DNA samples is a special event. I always subconsciously aspire to Kazakhstan. If the results of the analysis show a kinship with the Kipchaks, then for me, it will be a great joy. Kipchak sultans are highly respected in Egypt, because it was they who, not sparing their lives, defended the independence of this country, strengthened and developed the economy and culture. They mercilessly beat the enemy, who sought to conquer Egypt from all sides. The Mamluks showed their ability to fight both on land and at sea. Evidence of this is the citadel of Kaidbai, in the city of Alexandria, on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. Sultan Kaidbai is one of the prominent rulers of Egypt. Scientists attribute it to the Borji dynasty, the ancestors of which are the Circassians. After the Sultan of Kaidbai, there were six more sultans on the Egyptian throne. The last one is Tumanbai. In 1517, the reign of the Kipchak Mamluk dynasty in the history of Egypt ended. Power passed to the Ottoman Empire, but nevertheless, the Kipchaks remained active and took part in the government of the country until the invasion of Napoleon Bonaparte. Then they first mounted their horses to confront the enemy. Our main goal is to include all facilities left by our ancestors in a single list of sacred places. There are mosques, mausoleums, dams, roads, bridges, fortresses. Now we know that 100 similar places were identified in our country by special Kazakhstan program. We are sure that there are as many similar historical places outside Kazakhstan and they need to be promoted. Then everyone will know about our ancestors and that will be a real spiritual rebirth.
Members of the expedition completed their work in Egypt. They gathered enough material to interest scientists in deeper research of the great heritage left by our ancestors there.